Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be Harry Muppet. We are casting game number three of the semi finals series of games for the Zotac April monthly cup. So we do have Liquid Snoot and we do have Sage, our red Protoss player. So blue Zerg player Snoot. He, uh, he didn't do too well in the first game. He did some nice Baneling Harass, but he got very effectively countered by the Protoss player pushing out. He put the Protoss player in a nice defensive mindset, but the Protoss player just said nuts to that. I'm pushing out as soon as the Zerg stops attacking me. He pushed out. He had a very nice army. He had some Archons. He just wiped the Zerg player out. And in the second game, Snoot decided, all right, we're going to do something different here. He himself got put on the back foot quite badly. The Protoss player had Phoenix all over the place, constantly trying to swipe, snipe stuff, but the Zerg player got some nice Spore Crawler play down, he got some nice Queen play down, and he got his economy going on three bases, and then he just macroed like there was no tomorrow, got a massive army of Roaches, Lings, and Hydras out, and the Protoss player was not expecting it. The Protoss player going for lots of high Templar tech, lots of Colossus tech, lots of stuff, but I mean, he was he just did not have an army. He was getting all the tech he needed to, but he did not have an army. And the Zerg player just steamrolled him with a massive army, and he built it up in no time at all. So here we go, this is game number three, and we're going to see exactly how well these players do go. This is a semi-final, so it's a best of three game. So this is going to be the ace match. Whoever wins this game will go on to the grand final. I don't know who they'll be going on against because I have not cast the other semi-final games. The other semi-finals, if I just have a look, I believe it's against uh, two players. One is named Tool and the other is named Pain. So Pain and Tool, they sound pretty intimidating. And one of them will have to face off against the winner of this game in the grand final series and I do have those games as well so you can look forward to the grand final series where we see the best of the best competing against the best of the best to see who is the best of the best of the best and there we go we've got a forge coming out for the Protoss player there's a forge off a fast expand and here comes the first gateway so we can expect to see some cannons coming in so this is going to be a very very nice ship shape sort of defense down here the Protoss I'm sorry the Zerg is not going to be able to do much about it he hasn't had much luck pushing into this uh, sort of gate that the Protoss player continues to put in front of his main base and yeah it's just just really really awesome I've, I've never understood what these plates are there for I mean you can't build on top of them but you can run over them I think you can run over them anyway can you I think I think you can I'm not a hundred percent sure yeah, they, they can run over them. So I thought maybe it was uh, annoyance. So if you're constantly being hit on both bases, then you can sort of um, get slightly quicker defending one base to the other because I know that's a pain. I used to build uh, my pylon up here, but it actually takes longer to get around there. So you have to go all the way around here because if your gateway's there instead of all the way around there. So I always build it on the outer side these days. <coughs> but these plates, man, I'm really, I really don't understand why they're there because... You can see here, the perfect gate, you want to build on the outside of the ramp. You do not want to gate your expansion in and still let them run in. You want to gate over the ramp, so, I don't know. I mean, if you guys know why that plate is there, please tell me, because I'm very interested. I've been wondering about that for like a year or so, since they actually introduced the damn things. I know that some players used to build pylons there, or something like that. It's, uh, maybe it's to, um, maybe it's such a popular tactic to just cut off this area so just put something a pile on there and then a gateway there or something cut off this entry it doesn't make too much sense because you can still just run in the entire side run over the entire there and go in this side and I think I have found a way to counter my constant yawning and that is just to talk while I am yawning because I'm hoping that will not make my viewers as sleepy as if I just yawned and it just went on with it so I'm gonna go I'm gonna see and if it makes you feel less sleepy if I talk through the yawn, then please let me know. I'd be very interested to hear. And here we go. We've got a very decent economy going for the Protoss. Zerg player, you're doing a little bit better, but that's to be expected. However, he does not have any gas going yet. We saw this the previous game as well. He got a bunch of lings out. Where's his... Has he got speed coming out? Does he have speed? Let's have a look at the upgrades tab. He does not have speed. He is not going for speed. He's only just started getting his gas going now. He's going for a Roach Warren. So we can expect him to start getting the gas going up now. We've got a very nice attack in here. 
these guys, he didn't actually get any kills, the Zealot might have got one kill, but the Queen was already there and a bunch of Ligs as well, so he didn't manage to do anything. He's got a very nice pylon down, down there, he's got a very nice pylon up here, and wouldn't you know it, as soon as they start figuring out a nice counter for the Yawns, I start getting the hiccup, so there's just no, no end to my worries while ca casting, man, it just goes from bad to worse, but... I don't know, at least I'm still casting, at least we're still going ahead, and at least we're still enjoying the game. So there we go, got a bunch of Lings chasing this Stalker all the way across the map. They are not going to get all the way through, and we do not actually have any sentries for the Protoss player. I'm not sure why he's not building any sentries. He's, um, he's obviously, he's going for Phoenix again, they worked very well last time, and actually I don't think he got any sentries the last game. There we go, this, um, is targeting... His other Phoenix onto the first Phoenix, so they automatically follow. And he's going to do some nice harass like he did last game. And he's going against Roaches again, so he's going to do some very nice harass against the Roaches. But he's got to be wary. I mean, these Roaches took him by surprise last time. They uh, went out there. Got a massive army. So he's really going to worry about that. Phoenix are good at harassing, but you cannot, you cannot beat a massive army full of Roaches with just Phoenix. It just does not work. I mean, we saw that last game, he just completely fell apart. He is getting up his third base, but he's really, really got to start getting the workers, I mean, the units out. He's got to start getting the army out. You can see, income-wise, he's falling behind. And if we have a look at the, where's the goddamn army thing? He's starting to fall behind quite a lot. The uh, Zerg player is really pumping out those roaches, and the Phoenix, I mean, the Phoenix cannot possibly take them out as fast as they are being built at the moment. But all the Phoenix can do is just start sniping overlords, and maybe see if they can snipe a queen every now and then. But roaches, they're not going to be able to do it. There's a fairly, fairly decent army of roaches here. He's actually going to expand. This is going to be a very, very, very fast expansion. Very fast fourth base. Just, he was going for it before the 10 minute mark. So I'm going to say that's very fast. Here we go. The phoenix coming across. They see the fourth. So that's some very good scanning. we got some spore crawlers up again to wave those uh, phoenix away, so that's good. He might be a no, he's, he can't quite snub anything, but here we go, there's a bunch of roaches. The Protoss player, man, he has not learned the mistake from last game. He has not learned from last game. He has not got a decent army out to take these guys out. He needs to just build a crap load of units, and he's not doing it. I mean, he's, he's got to have like six gateways out with these bunch now, and he's just got to get a crap load of stalkers. He's got to go in there, he's got to take them out. He's got one Immortal coming out, which is going to be good. He's got the Phoenix coming out. He's got a, half of these guys. Probably going to be taken out by the time they get back home. So this is a good use of Phoenix. There he goes. He's going to keep chasing them. He's gone the wrong way, though. They've gone up the high road. He's gone for the low road. So there we go. Not going to quite got to work. But the Zerg player, he's nearly finished his fourth base. He's getting the Hydras out. He's going for the same game plan as last game. And it did so well the last game. The Protoss... Is he got enough to really counter it this time? He's definitely working his army a little bit more, but he's actually supply capped at the moment, and that is never a good position to be in. But you can see he's got one mortal out, he's getting out a second, so he's definitely going to start countering the roaches. But we can see the hydras coming out now as well. Quite a large amount of hydras. He's trying to keep him busy with the phoenix while he tries to build up an army, but the zerg player is having none of it. He's got the hydras out. And we finally see Storm coming down, as well as a couple of High Templars, so... That's going to be a very good counter. Versus the Hydras, he's decided he can't waste the Robo Bay build time by building Colossus. He needs it to build the Immortals, so he's going to do that. He's trying to get a Storm out to deal with the Hydras, but it may be too little too late. Viper's coming out, <coughs> expecting to see some Colossus. They're not going to see any, but they will see a few Immortals. And yanking the Immortals is always going to be a good idea as well, because they are very beefy, big units. But there we go. Protoss player, going to go in. He's got a lot of Lings, though. He's got a lot of Lings to take out. And there we go. We had feedback on one of those Vipers. There's a very nice feedback. Almost killed him. He's got, like, two health left or something. The Protoss player, you got to move up. He's got to try and move in the side. Does he see this? Oh, that, that's the Zerg cam. Whatever. He's going in there. He's got to get some storms down on the Hydras. He needs to get storms down on the Hydras, otherwise he's going to lose this battle. Two Immortals over there, in a very bad position. Where are the storms on the Hydras? 
Let's go see it. We've got the cloud going down on these units. There we go. There's a one storm on the Hydras. There's another storm on the Hydras. And it's looking like the Protoss player may yet win this battle. Because these Hydras are very low on health. They are going to have to run out of there. And I thought the Zerg player may have pulled it off there. But some storms. Two very, very crucial storms on the Hydras. Manages to push this army away. And the Protoss player can have a little bit of a breather. Not much though. He's still down on the army. And he is still supply capped. This may be the first time in history that I have seen a Masters game where somebody's actually gotten this badly supply capped. But there he goes, he's building four pylons up now. So hopefully that should be able to last him a little bit longer. The Zerg is going to max out very, very quickly. He's got to push it again. And the Protoss is still supply capped. There we go, the pylon's coming out now. He's got to build a whole bunch of units. He really needs to get a lot more gateway units out now. They're cheap. <coughs> And he really does need the uh, units out there. He's going to get more High Templar out there. So that is going to be very, very good. Oh, man. But I think he might be in trouble here. He's got a lot of High Templar. And he's got to get a lot of Storms down. And there we go. One Storm forcing this army back. The Vipers are putting cut the Cloud down. If they put the Cloud down on these guys, that is going to be very bad. Here we go. He's just going in and out. Trying to see if he could get the Storms laid down and still dodge them. He's, he's got the Hydras at the back, which is exactly what he needs to do. So, very good play there by the Zerg player. Keeping his army alive. A couple of those guys morphing into Archons. Archons, of course, could be very, very effective. Versus this Roach Hydra army. But here we go. Very large amount of Roach Hydras on the map. He's maxed out. The Protoss is getting close to maxed out, but he's not quite there yet. However, the Storms will make up the difference if he starts getting them down. So, we'll see another engagement here. The Zerg player has the defensive advantage. There we go, the Immortals coming out. A couple of storms being laid down on the Hydras, getting some nice storms down on this Hydra force. Starting to get wiped out. The Cloud's coming down, stops the Protoss player from attacking. He's morphing some Archons in straight away. The Zerg army is still quite strong though. He's still 186. He's building 30 Roaches at a time. That is why his army is so large. So he might lose there, but the Protoss player, man, he has only got until these Roaches come out to actually do some damage and then he is just going to get overwhelmed again he cannot possibly build up as fast as the Zerg player is building up and here we go this is another full army coming down to wipe out this Protoss player he does not have enough to push these guys back and they just get built up so fast so the Protoss player is going to have to run away he did not manage to do any significant damage here and he's going to try and stop these guys from chasing him but just too many roaches he does not have enough, he's only got one Robo base, so one Immortal being built at a time is nowhere near enough to counter this massive amount of roaches, and he's building up a bunch of Hydras now, so as soon as they come out, I expect this Zerg player to just go in, just start wiping the Protoss player out, because he really, really does have the army advantage at the moment. The Protoss player trying to build back up, but his production capacity is just not anywhere near the Zerg player. You can see he's maxed out already, the Protoss only up to 135, and you've got to remember about three minutes ago, they were both maxed out, but here we go, they both lost a massive amount, and the Zerg just macro it up. Macro it up like a complete boss, and he's, to make matters worse, he's got some Broodlords out as well, and the Protoss is just, he's not equipped to deal with Broodlords, he's not even equipped to deal with Roaches with the army he has left. So there we go, Zerg player, with some very, very convincing macro there. He, uh, if we have a look at the income tab, 69 to 69. So he was doing a good job, and the Protoss player, man, I mean, he was not slouching off in the economy department. He was going in, he was getting some minerals, but he just not, did not have the production capacity that he needed. I mean, we can't actually see gateways here anymore, but we can have a look at the bases and see how many he had. We had 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9. So that's a decent amount, and he also had one Robo, which I would have liked to see a bit more, but, I mean... 30 roaches, he built 30 roaches at a time. I mean, how is it even possible to catch up to that much production, man? It's impossible. I'm going to say it's absolutely impossible to catch up to that much. He must have just had, uh, of course, he had the spawn lava waiting, so he had drones just coming at, uh, lava just coming out the wazoo. And yeah, there he goes. The, um, I'm not sure why the Zerg player is still in this game, but he is still in this game. He's just waiting for his upgrades to finish, maybe. He wants to see the max amount of upgrades. But there we go. This game is officially over. How long, much longer does it go for? Uh, 
it's another minute. I don't know, maybe it's like the end of the movies where you you go through the credits and then you see something really awesome at the end of the movie. So we're gonna we're going to keep going on and we're gonna keep watching this video and um yeah, I mean basically the uh Protoss player, he ran into the same trap as last time. He didn't do as badly, he did a ton better job of getting out his forces and the first offensive the first offensive, the one that wiped him out last game, he managed to push it back this game. And he really did some good job with the Storms, but the Zerg player, man, he's just, um... Oh, I, I see, it was, some, it was some sort of watcher dude, some sort of uh, spectator guy keeping on. But there we go. Jacobo has left the game, and yeah, I mean, these guys, they just kept up the pressure. The uh, Protoss player, he had the Storms down very nicely. He got perfect Storms off time and time again, but... I mean, when you, when the Zerg could just produce that much that quickly, you, there's really not much you can do about it, unless you've got like 15, 18 gateways or something like that, or you needed like two or three Robos to keep producing Immortals, but the Broodlords, man, just the final nail in the coffin, he had no chance of defeating the Broodlords at that point, so he just said GG, and he just got out of there, and there we go, the first series of semi-final games for the Zotac Monthly April Cup, or the Zotac April Monthly Cup. I'm not sure which is better, but they're both awesome. Just as Zotac Company is, of course, for sponsoring StarCraft 2 tournaments and giving me replays to cast, which is always a good thing. So there we go. My voice is starting to get a little bit hoarse, or maybe it's just because I'm leaning back. I don't know. My voice always sounds a bit funny when I'm leaning back in the chair. Maybe because my head's leaning back and it's coming at a different angle. But there we go. Head is tilted slightly forward, but still pretty much straight. We are going to go on and we are going to cast the next series of semi-finals. Probably not right away because my voice is starting to go, but we will cast it sometime today, tomorrow, something like that. But there we go. It's the first series and Snoot is going to go on to the grand final. He is going to face either Pain or Tool. And we're going to see which one of those players goes to the grand final after we cast the next series of semi-final games. So thank you very much for watching this tournament series. This is Harry Muppet. Please subscribe if you enjoy the games. And please let me know if you like these tournament series and I will keep on doing them. So there we go. This has been Harry Muppet. Hope you enjoyed it.